I'm back in my home country to explore one of Italy's best kept secrets. This is stunning Adriatic coast. I'm on the final leg of my 700 mile journey, exploring the extraordinary sights and flavors. Look at that. Very delicious. Mm, wonderful. Of the spectacular east coast of Italy. Tranquil and unspoiled, there is so much to explore. From Venice in the north, down to the very end of the Adriatic coast. It's just awesome, awesome. I'm now more than 600 miles from Venice, heading to the very south of Puglia. Surrounded by water, this region is defined by the sea, famous for white sandy beaches and turquoise waters which rival the Caribbean. The area of Salento is the lesser known stretch of Puglia's coastline and is packed with surprises. My first stop is unmissable and is just outside the town of Roca. Now, I'm sure you're wondering what am I doing here. Well, let me tell you, this dusty track leads to a real hidden gem. Follow me. This is the Cave of Poetry, a 100-foot sinkhole it's one of a half a dozen large rock pools dotted along this section of the Adriatic coastline. Now, the locals, they like to keep these natural pools a secret. Well, it's not secret anymore because I just told you. In prehistoric times, this pool was a cave in the cliffside, but years of erosion caused the roof to collapse. With its 10-meter cliffs and crystal clear waters, it's ranked one of the 10 most beautiful natural pools in the world. I would never imagine in a million years that a place like this would have been in the middle of the rocks. This, if you come down here, you're gonna have to try it. And it's a great way to cool off in the punishing heat of the Puyan summer. After drying off, I'm back in the car for a 45-mile journey to the tip of Italy's hill. This is Santa Maria di Leuca, the town between two seas, because here is where the Adriatic meets the Ionian Sea. The town is the point where the east coast meets the west. During medieval times, it was fought over more than anywhere else on this coastline. Its basilica stands on the ruins of an ancient temple and is home to a small community of nuns and priest Father Don Gianni. E il nome della chiesa qual è? Beh, la chiesa è intitolata alla Madonna dei Finibusterre. The church is called Madonna dei Finibusterre. It means the last church at the end of the land. So where we are right here is the end of Italy. Leuca è um, la derivazione dal greco leucos. And leuca, what it means, is light, because when the Roman Empire came here, one thing that they realized that it was, everything was light everywhere. It was light into the sea, light into the stone. So they just kept that word, leuca, as light. To me, it doesn't really look like a church. In the old days, this church was always attacked by the Saracens. So the only way they could make sure that no more attack was uh, uh, coming is to change the look of the church that it would look like a villa. So from 
out there doesn't look like a church at all. And that was the way that they could uh, disguise. Non avere gli attacchi dei Saraceni, sì. bene, hanno anche preparato il tutto per un eventuale assedio. I've just asked Don Gianni, what's that hole over there? Okay? And he was explained that in, in the old days, when they had an attack and the door was closed, they used to throw hot oil to the invaders just to make sure that they would go away. Interesting. Oh, interesting. E soprattutto caldo. But what kind of oil was he? Extra virgin olive oil, sunflower oil, just normal olive oil? What kind of oil? Silenzio. La preghiera. And we were actually saying, nowadays it's very rare to go in a place where it's quiet, where you can only hear your voice and your soul. This is just magical. Bello. E quello lì? Quella è la cosa più importante. Espressamente quell'altare con l'edicola per incastonarla lì. Ed è rimasta lì. Bello. Fino allora. So the last time that uh, this church got invaded, it was in 1700. And the only original thing from that invasion where they burned everything down is that paint there of the Madonna and Jesus. It's lunchtime and I want to show my appreciation by cooking up a classic Italian dish for Don Gianni and some of the nuns. A saffron risotto with grilled chicken and local radicchio. Look, let me be very honest with you. Making risotto is the easiest thing that you will ever cook. You just need to follow some very simple instruction. So the first thing that you need is a large saucepan, a little bit of a heat underneath. Finally, chop the onions. I'm gonna pick up the onions straight into the hot pan without adding any oil, because I want all the water and the moisture of the onion to get out of the way before I'm gonna add any oil. You can see straight away when the moisture comes out of the onion because the bottom of the pan it starts to darken. So once you've done that, we're gonna add some oil. And then straight away, we need to start to toast the rice. Now, I'm using arborio rice. You can use carnaroli rice if you want. Use one and a half handfuls of rice per person. Add some fresh thyme. You move the rice around the oil, so each little grain gets coated by the oil and you gently toast it. Now is the time to add the wine. I'm using white wine. Just make sure that you evaporate all the alcohol and slowly, slowly allow the wine to get into the rice. Now, once the wine is completely been absorbed by the rice, is the time to add saffron. I use saffron strand. You could use saffron powder, it's absolutely fine. As you put the saffron strands, we can start to add the stock. Look what's happening now to the saffron that is going to melt and is going to change the color completely. See, the secret of making a good risotto is very simple. You add the stock little by little, like that, and then let the rice absorb the stock. When it's absorbed, it, do add a little bit more. See, what I'm showing you is how to make a vegetarian risotto. That's why I'm using vegetable stock. But if you have any meat lovers, you can add any cooked ham in there. You can add prawns. You can add chicken that is already been cooked. This is what is great about the risotto. The other very important thing is always make sure that you season your risotto at the end. Do remember, your vegetable stock or chicken stock, whatever we're going to use, is going to be quite salty. Now, let me show you what I've done here. I've got a breast of chicken, which I flat it down slightly. Then you put balsamic glaze on top, you rub it in, and just griddle pan, because I'm going to shred that right at the end and put it on top of the risotto. I can see that the rice is nearly cooked. So I'm going to add in some beautiful radicchio. Radicchio is nothing more than a bitter Italian salad. But you could use some rocket leaves in there. Spinach will do the job and just add it probably about three or four minutes 
before the risotto is completely cooked. Now, how do we make a risotto creamy? With butter and with cheese. Switch everything off, add in the butter in the middle of the risotto. And then loads of cheese. I'm using pecorino cheese, you can use parmesan cheese. I think pecorino is going to work fantastic. And then the only thing you have to do, just fold the butter and the cheese into the rice and keep stirring. The more you stir, the more starch you release from the rice and the more creamy your risotto is going to be. There you go. Right in the middle. Let's put a little bit of chicken on top. We'll put a little thyme and a drizzle of extra virgin olive oil right on top. If they're not gonna make me Saint Gino, nothing ever will. Buono. It's very delicious. Oh, you're very kind. Thank you. Thank you. Don Gianni sa cucinare. Non le sa. No, lo sa. No. no. Io mangio. Sa mangiare. <laughs> sa solo mangiare. You can't cook? No cooking? Mm. No? Only eating. È più bello mangiare. È più bello mangiare. <laughs> They're very funny. <laughs> I've reached my final destination in the southern Puglia, the town of Santa Maria di Leuca, where the Adriatic Sea meets the Ionian. Now I'm heading over there, the most southerly tip of the Adriatic. But first, I have a very important job to do. Just below the Basilica is a huge formation of rocks which leads down to the water. People usually get asked to switch on Christmas lights. Well, not me. I switch on waterfalls. Look at that. That is awesome. This 800-foot waterfall was built in 1939 on the orders of Mussolini. He wanted to create a dramatic end to Puglia's aqueducts, which had taken 30 years to build. Well, I have to say, this is definitely a way to show off. And they only switch on the waterfall in very, very special occasion. Of course, Gino da Campo is in town. That's a special occasion. The water cascades into the Adriatic below at a rate of 1,000 liters per second. It's a lot of water coming down. Let me tell you something, I've done so many things in my life, but this definitely the most exciting thing ever. Below the waterfall is the town's small harbor, where I'm itching a lift onto the water to see where the two seas meet. Giovanni has been fishing here since he was a little boy. He runs boat trips around the peninsula. Sì, sì, sì. E dimmi un po' la storia, dai. Allora, no, e niente, prima, quando ero piccolino, prima di andare a scuola, mio padre mi portava... So before, when he, he's got a memory when he used to be a kid, before he used to go to school, his father woke him up every single day, at four o'clock in the morning, they had to throw the nets in the water, wait for about an hour, pick up the nets again, and this is all before he actually started the school. Che tipo di pesci prendete qua? Beh, qua un po' di tutto. Si fa la pesca al pesce spada, allo strascico, sì. con le reti, con il palangaro, un po' di tutto, insomma. Si Merluzzi si pigliano? Sì, 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 sì. I just asked what kind of fish do they get around here, and he said a little bit of everything, but mainly cod, uh, swordfish, uh, tuna, 
uh, octopus. This is definitely my kind of uh, place. Ma il mare qua è sempre agitato. Beh, sì, abbastanza. È abbastanza ventilato qua, quindi... Ma si capisce niente. Sì, sì, sì. Sì, ho solo chiesto a Giovanna se è mio o è abbastanza choppy qui. E lui stava dicendo che è normale, perché questo è dove le due si mettono. E quindi è sempre ventilato e il mare è sempre choppy. Con gli anni di esperienza di salire queste acque, Giovanni mi ha portato a più che può to the spot that marks the very end of the Adriatic coastline. See that rock over there? That is right the tip of the hill of the boat. So if you go either in front of you, right at the end. This rocky headland is where the 715 miles of Italy's Adriatic coast ends. There is nothing but water between here and North Africa. There is an argument about the locals uh, where the Adriatic Sea ends and where the Ionian Sea begins. Now, some people say that it ends and begins over there, at the, on the rock. Other people, they say it ends and begins on the rock over there. I'm right in the middle, and because I'm here and nobody can hear me, the local can't hear me, I'm going to make the decision. Right here, where I'm standing, this is the line. The sea completely defines life here, so I'm going to cook my favorite fish dish to mark the end of my coastal travels along the Adriatic. I'm using locally caught swordfish and serving it with a tangy gremolata sauce. I'm going to show you how to prepare an amazing swordfish served with Italian sauté potato. Now, if you don't want to use swordfish, you can use tuna, but please try swordfish because you're really going to enjoy it. Now, I'm going to serve swordfish with a wet gremolata. Gremolata usually is parsley, garlic, capers, and lemon zest. It looks like a rough pesto. Here, I go finely chopped flat leaf parsley. In there, I'm going to put three cloves of garlic, this. So, chopped garlic. Now we go capers. You need to make sure that you rinse them under cold water. Just chop away. The other thing that I like about swordfish that uh, is a quite lean fish and very healthy, very good for you. You can pretty much bite everywhere and not expensive as well. Okay, so the capers are done. Roughly chopped. One more ingredient is lemon zest. So the lemon is going to give extra freshness to the gremolata. Then we're going to season with salt and then extra virgin olive oil. And then just right at the end, I'm going to squeeze a little bit of lemon juice. I don't know if you can see, the wind is definitely picked up now. So mix everything together. I see, the job is done. You don't only have to use it for swordfish, even if you have just a plain grilled uh, chicken, put a bit of gremolata on top for extra flavor. Or if you do like a potato salad, put a couple of tablespoons of gremolata in there, mix everything together. Now I'm going to show you how to make the saute potato. First of all, I got new potato. Okay, which I parboil them and nice and al dente, leave the skin on. The only thing you have to do is to cut them lengthways, just like that. You don't really have to be precise. Okay, so I got my potato, cut in a half. Then I got a little bit of garlic, just slice it. In there, we're also gonna put rosemary. Rosemary, potato, marriage made in heaven. Now, hopefully, the wind is not going to blow my ingredients away. Once you put the rosemary, olive oil. I put the heat underneath the oil, the garlic, and the rosemary. As soon as you start to see the sizzle, in goes the potatoes. Put them cut side down, so it starts to absorb the flavor of the oil and the rosemary. Oh, yes. Look at that. All sizzling around the potatoes. 
For the swordfish, very simple. We got a little bit of olive oil goes in there. OK, we want the shallow fry. This goes straight into the hot oil, just like that. You can see straight away with swordfish because it changes color. Look at the difference in color, like a clear color, and then it becomes opaque. And now is the time. Look at that. We'll take probably about one minute on each side, if that's also ready for my potatoes here. Oh, yes. Golden, crispy. If you're a potato lover, those are the potatoes to try. Season the potatoes and the swordfish. OK. Remember, don't overcook it. Let me show you something very, very important. The line there tells me that in the middle, it is still nice and raw, like tuna should be, but it's all crispy and cooked around. Perfect. Now let me put everything together. So I've got my beautiful potatoes here. Fish, or as we say in Italian, pesce spada. And then the last touch is my beautiful gremolata. We haven't finished yet. Be patient. I'm taking my time as this is the last cook. What a way to hand this amazing calorie journey on the Adriatic coast. Pesce Spada with sauté potato. Cheers to you guys, and thank you for watching. And what a coastline. But now I'm going back home. Until next time, Italia, arrivederci. Mamma mia. Oh! I am speechless. This is the most embarrassing thing ever. Mamma mia. Oh, it's pronto, eh? He wants a knife and a fork. They devour the Parmigiana. Look at them. This is just paradise. What would you want more from life? Salute.